Steam enters an adiabatic turbine at 800 psi absolute and 900 degrees Fahrenheit and leaves at a pressure of 400 psi absolute. Determine the maximum amount of work that can be delivered by this turbine. So what were, so we basically have a turbine and I'm gonna start the problem set up. First, I'm just gonna draw a simple sketch of a turbine just so that we can kind of see what's going on. So we know that we're going to have um, our fluid coming into the turbine. So I'm going to call this one and then it's going to come out. Just call this two. And there's going to be some work associated with this. So then it so this so we have our basic turbine and then it says steam enters the turbine at 800 psi absolute and 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to start filling this in. So we know that the pressure at the inlet, which I'm going to call P1, is 800 psi absolute, and the temperature at the inlet is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And then at state or at the outlet, which I'm um, calling 2, we know the pressure. So P2 is 400 PSI absolute. So this is basically all of the information that this problem gives us. It's, and then it wants us to determine the maximum amount of work that can be del delivered by this turbine. So we're actually looking for the maximum amount of work. So the hint to how we're going to solve this problem is that it says the maximum amount. So the maximum amount is basically an, an ideal turbine. So it's a turbine that's not going to have any losses from friction. Um, there's basically going to be no losses. So really what this is saying is that we have an ideal turbine, because that's going to give us the maximum amount of work. And an ideal turbine would be a reversible turbine. So we know that this is a reversible process. It kind of looks like we're not given enough information here for our inlet and outlet to know the conditions. So we have the pressure and temperature at the inlet, so we have enough information there. But at the outlet, it kind of looks like we might be missing something. But it turns out we do have what we need since this is a reversible turbine. And it also turns out that this is adiabatic. We have an adiabatic reversible turbine, which means that this process is isentropic. So that means that S1 is equal to S2. So since we know what S1 is, because we can look it up, that means that we're going to know what S2 is. So we do have everything that we need to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and let's make some assumptions. So some of our assumptions were already given to us. First of all, that so this is adiabatic. That just, like in real life, adiabatic would just mean that it's well insulated. So there's not much heat loss. Um, and then isentropic, that's an assumption that we're going to use to analyze the system. In real life, nothing is truly going to be isentropic, but things can approach being isentropic if losses in the system are minimized. So there's minimal friction. Um, so a few other assumptions that we need to make. I'm going to specify here that Q is zero. So this is because it's adiabatic. And then it hasn't given us any information for velocities. So even if we wanted to calculate a change in kinetic energy, we can't. So we're going to assume that the change in kinetic energy is negligible, and this turbine probably isn't tall enough for there to be a um, change in potential energy worth worrying about. So that's basically our setup and assumptions. Now let's write down the equations we're going to use. So we already know that um, S2 is equal to S1. And so we don't really need to write out the second law. 
equation to solve this, but I'm going to write it out just so that you can see how we know that and where it comes from. So we know that um, the entropy generated is equal to M, so this is would be the internal entropy of the system, plus, and then this would be the entropy of the surroundings. So since, and we know that this is greater than or equal to zero, but since this has told us, since we know that this is a reversible turbine because we're looking for the max work, that means that our greater than or equal to is actually equal. So we know that ours is equal to zero. Um, so ours oops, is equal to zero because it is reversible. And then we also know that Q is zero because it's adiabatic. So this entire term is zero. So basically we're left with M dot 2 minus S1 is equal to zero. So then we can just divide the M through. So we get S2 minus S1 is equal to zero, which then becomes S2 is equal to S1. So that's how we knew that here. So basically we... I, I, we knew that right away because it's reversible and it's adiabatic. But I also think it's helpful to kind of go through the equations just to see where that comes from. All right, so what the problem is asking for is to calculate work. So we're going to need the first law in order to calculate the work. So first law. So we have Q minus W, these are rates, is equal to M dot 2 minus H1 plus, and I'm just going to call this um, change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy. And then we know that this is zero, this is zero, Q is zero. So we're left with work is equal to h2 minus h1. And what I want to do is just multiply through the negative sign so that we, that we have work is equal to m dot, and then this is going to end up being h1 minus h2. So we're going to look these up on the tables. The other thing that we're going to do, since we don't know the mass flow rate, because it wasn't given, what I'm going to do is calculate the max work on a per mass basis. So what I'm going to do is divide through the mass flow rates and then I have the work on a mass flow base or on a mass basis and so then this is just H1 minus H2. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't have the mass flow rates so that's so how we have to do it. All right, so now let's get the data. So at the inlet, we know that P1 is equal to 800 PSI absolute, and P2 is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And we know that because these were given. So I'm guessing that this is probably superheated vapor, but let's just double check. So T sat at 800 PSI absolute is equal to 518.27 degrees F. And I just got that off the table. So I just looked up the saturation temperature at 800 PSI absolute. And so our temperature is definitely greater than T sat. So that means that we have a superheated vapor. And so then we can just go to the superheated vapor table, and we need H1 and we need S1. So the enthalpy is equal to 1456.0 BTU per pound mass, and the Entropy is equal to 1.6413 BTU per 
pound mass R. All right, now let's do the outlet. So it gave us P2 as 40 PSI absolute, and we know that P, or sorry, T, so we know, and this right here is T2. We know that S2 is equal to S1, which is equal to 1.6413 BTU per pound mass R. So what we don't know immediately is the phase. So we need to figure out what phase this is so that we can, so that we know what table to use. So what we want to do is look up, so we, we have the entropy. So what we want to do is look up the entropy of the saturated vapor and the saturated liquid and then compare our entropy to those entropies. So at 40 PSI absolute, the entropy of the saturated liquid is equal to 0 0.39213 BTU pound mass R, and the entropy of the saturated vapor is equal to 1.6766 BTU pound mass R. So if we compare our entropy to these, ours is, so 1.6413 is less than this, so that the entropy of the saturated vapor, but it's greater than the entropy of the saturated liquid. So that means that we have a saturated mixture. So basically what we have coming out of the turbine is a mixture of liquid and vapor. So what we need to do in order to get our data is we need to calculate the quality. And we can do that. We know that S is equal to SF plus X SFG. And we know all of these because we can look those two up and then we know this. And then we can calculate HF. But we only need... The only thing we need is the enthalpy at the outlet. So H2 is equal to HF plus X HFG. So once we know X, then we can calculate the enthalpy. So if we look up HF, HF is equal to 236.14 BTU per pound mass and HFG is equal to 933.69 BTU per pound mass. Now let's do some calculations. So let's start out by calculating the quality. So we know that the entropy is equal to SF plus X SFG. So if we just plug in some numbers, um, SF is 1.6413 BTU pound mass R. And then this is equal to 0 0.39213 BTU pound mass R plus X. And then this is... 1.28448 BTU pound mass R. So then we can just solve this for X. So X is equal to 0 0.97251. So basically this is a pretty high quality mixture. It's mostly steam or vapor. All right, so now let's calculate the enthalpy. So H2 is equal to 236.14 BTU per pound mass plus 0 0.97251 multiplied by 933.69 BTU per pound mass. So then H2 is equal to 
0.16 BTU per pound mass. So now we have everything that we need to calculate the work. So the work is equal to H1 minus H2, which is equal to uh, 1456.0 BTU per pound mass minus 1144.2 BTU per pound mass. And so then this is equal to 311.8 BTU per pound mass. So this is the maximum amount of work that this turbine can do, assuming that it's adiabatic and reversible. And the sign is positive because the work is out.